The number one team in the country did not get a number one seed. Wow. Syracuse winner will play the winner of the Salt Lake City Regional. The winner of the Austin Regional will play the winner of Nashville. Because this really is inaccurate. Providence Friars 
are in as the number six seed. They'll be taking on the number 11 seed, the Kentucky Wildcats, with 18 wins. There are going to be some incredible matchups in the later rounds of this bracket. If the top seeds could avoid the early upsets, we can look forward to some real heavyweight battle. Next up, we'll take a look. The Louisville Cardinals are the top seed, finishing at 26 and 6. In the ACC, they'll take on the UNC Asheville Bulldogs the number 16 ranked team. This will be their second appearance in the NCAA tournament in team history. The Syracuse Orange are in as the number 8 seed. They'll be taking on the number 9 seed, the Alabama Birmingham Blazers, with 21 wins. The Alabama Crimson Tide come in as the number 4 seed, finishing at 24 and 9. And they'll take on the 13th seed with 21 wins. Congrats with UMKC. The Auburn Tigers enter the field as the number five seed from the SEC. This marks their 13th appearance Auburn in the NCAA champs. tournament in school history. They'll be getting ready to face the number 12 seed, the American Eagle. Finish the season with 20 wins. They're the tournament champion. Our number two seed is from the Big Ten. The Michigan State Spartans come into the NCAA 30 wins as a two seed? That's rare in this game. They're going to play the number 15 seed, the Terriers of St. Francis, who came in first in their conference tournament, finishing at 16 and 13. Next up is the number 7 seed, the Mississippi State Bulldogs, have established themselves as one of the best teams from the SEC. They'll be going up against the number 10 seed, the Colorado State Rams, with 19 wins. This marks their fourth appearance in the NCAA. The Boston College Eagles are in as the number 3 seed. They'll be taking on the number 14 seed, the Akron Zips, with 21 wins. And now the number 6 seed, the USC Trojans, come into the tournament as the 4th place team in their conference during the regular season and finish 2nd in their conference tournament. They are going to play the number 11 seed, the Tulsa Golden Hurricane, who finished 2nd in their conference tournament, finishing at 24 and 8. I think this could wind up being the bracket that brings us this year's Cinderella story. A few of the higher seeds here have had terrific seasons, and I'll be surprised if at least one of them doesn't put together a long run in this tournament. On to our third bracket of the day. The Kansas Jayhawks are the top seed, finishing at 29 and 4 in the Big 12. They'll take on the South Dakota State Jacks, the number 16 ranked team to the Their NCAA first appearance ever. In team history. Our number 8 seed is from the Mountain West Conference, the San Diego State Aztecs had a tremendous year that included a regular season championship. They're going to play the number nine seed, the San Francisco Don, who were regular season champions in their conference, finishing at 20 and 8. From the WAC, this is their third... Cal State the Bakersfield, NCAA the four seed. School Best season in school history. ...to face the number 13 seed, the Marshall Thundering Herd, finished the season with 19 wins. They're the tournament champions from Conference USA. The Xavier Musketeers, are in as the number five seed. They'll be taking on the number 12 seed, the Pepperdine Wade, with 17 wins. The West Virginia Mountaineers are in as the number two seed. They'll be taking on the number 15 seed, the Chattanooga Mocs, with 20 wins. Next up is the number seven seed. The Baylor Bears have established themselves as one of the best teams from the Big 12. They'll be going up against the number 10 seed, the UNLV Running Rebels, with 20 wins. They return once more to the very familiar surroundings of the NCAA tournament. And now the number three seed, the Clemson Tigers, come into the tournament after finishing second in their conference during the regular season and were semifinalists in their conference tournament. They are going to play the number 14 seed, the Eastern Washington Eagles, who came in first in their conference tournament, finishing at 19 and 9. The North Carolina Tar Heels come in as the number six seed, finishing at 20 and 9. They take on the 11th seed, the Loyola Rambler, from the Horizon League, looking into the future a little bit. This bracket looks poised for a titanic matchup in the regional final. The top two seeds can take care of business in the first three rounds. We have the possibility of a classic Elite Eight meeting. And finally, the Washington Huskies are the top seed, finishing at 26 and 6. In the Pac-10, they'll take on the Prairie View Panthers the number 16 ranked team. This will be their second appearance all time in the NCAA tournament. Next up is the number eight seed. The Georgia Tech Yellow Jackets have established themselves as one of the best teams from the ACC. They'll be going up against the number nine seed, the Nevada Wolfpack, with 21 wins. 
this will be their 11th appearance in the NCAA tournament in the history of their school. The Oregon Ducks are in as the number four seed. They'll be taking on the number 13 seed, the Drake Bulldog, with 20 wins. The Creighton Blue Jays come in as the number five seed, finishing at 24 and seven. And they will take on the 12th seed, the Siena Saints, from the Metro Atlantic Conference, with 22 wins. The Villanova Wildcats enter the field as the number two seed from the Big East. It's yet another appearance in the brackets for school. The number one team in the country. People are stunned they're not a one seed. Face the number 15 seed, the Winthrop Eagles, finish the season with 15 wins. They're the regular season champion from the Ivy League. And now the number seven seed, the California Golden Bears, come into the tournament after finishing second in their conference during the regular season and were winners of their conference tournament. They are going to play the number 10 seed, the Texas Tech Red Raiders, who were semifinalists in their conference tournament. The Georgetown Hoyas are in as the number three seed. They'll be taking on the number 14 seed, the Tennessee Martin Skyhawks, with 18 wins. Our number six seed is from the SEC. The LSU Tigers were rewarded for their outstanding play this season with an at-large bid and a ticket to the big dance. They are going to play the number 11 seed, the St. Louis Billikens, who came in first in their conference tournament, finishing at 21 and 10. On the surface, I'd have to say this regional might be the most difficult of the four. Certainly the depth of quality teams here is very impressive. Whoever emerges from this bracket will have been through some battles. What are your thoughts on our top 16 seats, Clark? Maybe I haven't agreed with the selection committee every year, but I think they did a great job this time. The top 16 looks just about right to me. The Villanova Wildcats could easily have been a number one seed. They certainly look to me like a team that could be there when the final four rolls around. Now, let's bring the conference picture into focus. The ACC gets seven teams. The SEC with six. Six out of the Big East. The Pac-10 gets five teams. The Big 12 with five. Four out of the Big Ten. What a down year for the non-power conference. Here's the list of the teams that were on the bubble heading into Selection Sunday. So, partner, which of those invitees should be sending the Selection Committee a thank you card? The Tulsa Golden Hurricane played in one of the power conferences, and that counts for a few extra wins in the eyes of the NCAA, whether it's right or not. But let's not take anything away from them. They had a nice year. While they start prepping for their first-round games, the five teams on the other side of the field will be full-time students again. Rutgers start at night and point the fingers squarely at themselves for putting together a butter soft schedule this season and then not rolling through. If you're not going to schedule any tough games, then you better win more games than they did. All right, Clark, now that we know all the teams and matchups, time to get the tournament underway and let the madness take over.